Roger Botel is the Managing Director at Capital Economics. He's also a Specialist Advisor to the House of Commons Treasury Select Committee as well as an Economic Advisor to Deloitte and a former Chief Economist at HSBC. Well, delighted to say that Roger joins me now to discuss uh, Europe's debt woes as we look ahead to Portugal. We'll also be looking at the headaches facing the UK economy. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, first of all, looking at Portugal, um, mm. is this uh, 7 per cent a kind of a crucial barrier? Is it something to be watched for? Is it just a psychological number? I think it's a psychological number. Mm. Uh, and what's more, I don't myself think, actually, that uh, everything's going to depend upon whether or not Portugal accepts a bailout. A lot of comment in the press to the effect that Germany and other countries want Portugal to accept the bailout in order to prevent contagion to, from spreading to other countries. I don't see the logic here. If Portugal accepts the bailout, I think the speculators will simply move on to Spain and maybe Italy just the same, because the issues will be uh, unchanged by all this. The issues to do with low growth, huge debt. And indeed, that's exactly what's happened in the past. Exactly. I mean, we've already seen Precisely. this. Precisely. Um, so, in a way, the, the longer that Portugal maybe is in the spotlight, uh, that takes a little bit of pressure off Spain. It could be argued the other way. Mm. It? Uh, now, the ECB's role in all of this, because the ECB uh, has been buying bonds, yeah. and we know that in, in, in uh, Portugal, should it be doing that? Or how much longer can it continue to behave like that? Oh, I don't know. I think this is really a second order question, and the pressure is really on the ECB. It's in a very difficult position. Mm. This is surely a sticking plaster. I mean, maybe there's a time for sticking plasters mm. and, uh, and the ECB is one of the few entities that can put on the plaster. But long term, this isn't a solution. Mm. What's got to happen is uh, long term funding for Portugal and Portugal sorting out its own economic mess. Now, I think the numbers there are so dreadful as they are for Greece. I don't really quite see how they can sort out their mm. economic mess. Mm. Well, this is the longer term, bigger picture mm. issue, isn't it? Is what does the ECB do? Well, we're also going to see a change of, the, of uh, precedent this year. Mm. When Jean-Claude Trichet leaves, is that going to signal, a, I mean, it could potentially signal a different path for the ECB, couldn't it? Well, I may be naive, I don't know, but I always tend to think that individuals don't play that big a role in things like this. Uh, and really what we're talking about is fundamental economic forces. And the fundamental economic forces in this case are called France and Germany, and in particular Germany. Uh, what do they want from European Monetary Union? How prepared are they to dilute, in the case of Germany, some of its uh, purity, shall we say, in regard to the operation of monetary policy? Uh, how far do they see the dangers? Uh, are they prepared to countenance the possibility of one country leaving? These, I think, are the really big questions. But whoever's in power uh, in the hot seat in the ECB, I don't myself think, will make a great deal of difference. You don't think an Axel Weber figure taking over would, uh, would change the, the complexion? Well, at the margin, I guess um, there's the risk he's going to be really rather more abrasive and rather more conservative, given what he's said. Mm -hmm. But I mean, the lesson of these things is, in the end, I think people get taken over by the institutions and the power structures, and we'll have to see. I think Angela Merkel is the person, really, that's got the power. And so, just as an overview, where do you think this will go? Do you think that one country or more than one country will simply have to leave? Can you think of a mechanism that's going to make it work? Yeah, I've said for some time that I think uh, this is a botched monetary union, has been from the start. Uh, and essentially what's got to happen is that it's either got to go on to full political and fiscal union or it's got to break up. Uh, and maybe, actually, there's a way of finessing those two things in the sense that uh, with a smaller group of countries, without some of these more difficult countries on the periphery, then you could see political and fiscal union, I guess, with uh, Germany, perhaps France, Benelux and so on. Mm -hmm. Turning attention now to the UK, we've seen some fairly disappointing data uh, coming mm -hmm. out and um, thinking of house prices uh, and of services. Uh, do we think, is this the beginning of, uh, of a slowdown in the economic recovery that's beginning to feed into these numbers? Well, we really don't know, do we? It's been a mixed bag. There have been some strong manufacturing numbers uh, earlier on, well, back end of last year, there were some strong GDP figures. Uh, I think it's all to play for. Now, my own guess is that the recovery is fading and that as, with the, as the fiscal uh, tightening begins really to be felt, I think we will see growth fall back. And You allude to the housing market. That's potentially quite vulnerable with the lenders now facing a shortage of money as the bank uh, uh, in its special uh, funding scheme. So I'm not, uh, my, my guess is that the economy is going to fade. Mm. If, if, that's, if that's borne out, uh, what should this government do? Should those austerity measures stay in place? 
Well, there's a lot of talk about Plan B, mm. and I'm not sure there's much they can do. You know, you're either going to tackle the deficit or you aren't. They've made it pretty clear they're going to try and tackle the deficit. They've announced a pretty tough plan. Um, there's not an awful lot I think that they can responsibly do without losing an enormous amount of face and political capital. I would imagine that if the recovery does fade, that they'll look to the Bank of England to increase QE. Mm. Uh, on the subject mm. of QE, we've got inflation that's sort of stubbornly high. Um, there is, there are voices saying that we should be raising rates and yet also there may need to be a second round of QE. Well I think it would be rather odd both to raise <laughs> rates and do a second round of QE. It would be rather strange. So what, where, do you, where do you lie on um, Again, this is a very difficult position for the mm. Bank of England this time to be in. Uh, my view is that the bank should stick to its guns. It's argued that there's a lot of spare capacity in the economy which will in due course bring inflation down. I think this is right. Inflation is going to go a lot higher, unfortunately, mm. I think, in the next few months. Uh, but not due to, I think, as it were, fundamental underlying inflationary forces. Mm. I'm pretty confident that next year it'll come down quite sharply. So I think the bank should do absolutely nothing. Now, we saw Bob Diamond getting an awful lot <laughs> of uh, stick in uh, today's papers uh, over uh, his appearance yesterday. The banker's bonuses, uh, mm. it's a very difficult subject, uh, isn't it? I mean, it's banker bashing is very easy, and uh, resolving the situation seems to be very difficult for George Osborne to do. Where do you stand on this? Well, I don't think there is a great deal in the short term that the government can do about this. Oh, my view on this is quite clear. Uh, it's absurd for governments to be laying down what bankers should be paid. Equally, the bonuses are themselves absurd. How do I reconcile those two? Well, this is all about structure. There's something profoundly wrong with the structure of the banking industry. And if the government seriously wants to tackle this, and it's got to move to increase competition in banking, I think restrict the scope of the market in a whole range of areas so that banks don't make so much money. And if they don't make so much money, they won't be paying some such big bonuses. Roger Poodle, thank you very much indeed for joining us.